And if you don't mind, well, if we do mind, he's just damaged the Australian shooting percentages. They're shooting it at 50%, the Aussies. And they're continuing to press up the court. Here's Cho. Path in towards the basket, finishes it beautifully. The foul is on Norris. And that was an excellent finish. Just watch the way that Cho aggressively took it straight at the Australians and then finished it with excellent, beautiful touch. The Aussies sagged way down there. You can see they didn't start to pick them up at the foul line. They sagged way down under the basket, which let uh, number 10 Cho really drive in there and drive in hard and, and draw that foul. He's been their leading point scorer so far in the tournament, Cho. He's got seven in this match. Second only to number five, Kim Dong-hyun. Ness, oh, too easy. Too Norris has left all alone there. Sean Norris. Trans yes. Sorry, Darren, transition basketball, good to see. Yes, we see a couple of the Japanese players, they're waiting for their match. Perhaps a little bit worried about uh, the air quality out here in Dandenong. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Oh, beautiful defence, or is there a foul? It's a pushing foul, a bit of chair contact. Unlucky, tough call there on Sean Norris, but the referees are out there doing the best they can. Interesting to note that the referees would also be vying for selection over in uh, the World Championships as well. Uh, I'm not sure of the numbers that come from each country, but each zone, I'm pretty sure, provides a certain number of referees, and the guys that are here would be also vying for selection, so they're looking to put their best foot forward, foot forward as well. Indeed, it's, a, uh, it's always... As tough a fight uh, with the officials as it is with the players on the court. Perhaps a little bit friendlier though. They <laughs> tend to get along a little bit better, most of them. Yeah, they need to work as a team as well, don't they? The three of them, and they need to work and be consistent with their calls so that the players uh, understand they have control of the game and know what to expect the call's going to be. Kim Dong-kyun up to 11 points. First Korean player to reach double figures, Norris. Oh, beautiful! Showtime! Nice behind the back pass there from Shawnee Norris. And, and on to Justin Eveson, the Perth connection. Eveson has 20 points, but look at this. They call it, you call in the whiz. Bang. Yeah. Very pretty, like, very pretty. It is pretty to watch. Of course, ABC, your home of basketball, we have the coverage of the rest of this Asia Oceania Championships, of course, uh, tomorrow evening as well on ABC2, and then the final on Saturday evening. And on Saturday afternoon, check your local guides on ABC1 for the coverage of the Women's National Basketball League, a match that is being billed in some circles as the grand final preview this week, the Sydney Uni Flames against the Bulleen Boomers. The Boomers in some great form early, as are the Aussie Rollers. They are leading at the moment by 26 points over the Koreans. Three minutes until three-quarter time. Latham, one of the co-captains of the Australian under-23 team, passes it in to, Nor to Eveson, I should say. He tries to return the favour with a touch pass to Norris. Sean Norris just trying to fatten up the stats, just threw up a limp first attempt at the layup and uh, got his own rebound. Had a second go. Just getting himself a bit of time to get settled there again, Sean. He put the ball up, hit the ring, get another three seconds. I'm sure that's what he was doing. Of course it was. Oh, and Justin Eason, he just has the angry eyes, doesn't he? He is such a fiery competitor. Coming across and uh, just bumping chairs with Kim dong Kyun. He smashed the ball away after the whistle had gone. Bit of uh, white line fever. Yeah, a little bit there. Justin's very intense with what he plays. We can also see talking to his teammate there, Yannick Blair. Trying to encourage him and, and so they can work together as a team on that side defensively. That would be their job on that side of the court, that side of the key, to lock that down and make sure that the opposition doesn't come through. So they need to get a combination and, and work out some chemistry there. And that's what this, this tournament's about as well, having the young guys come through, being able to work with some of the more experienced guys. I must also say, as Kim dong Hyun puts that second free throw down, 65 to 38, I was having a chat to Justin Eveson after the game last night and I made a comment, Brendan, about uh, how I thought the Japanese needed to lift and they weren't particularly impressive yesterday. And uh, Justin Eveson, in no uncertain terms, as Bill Latham's called for a three-second violation, in no uncertain terms reminded me exactly how good the rollers had been and uh, I think it was a little bit put out that I hadn't given, uh, given the Aussie boys more credit. 
Yeah, well, they, they gave Japan nothing yesterday. They started off very strong, but uh, a different game today with Korea. Korea have come out strong, taking it to the Aussies. It's blown out a little bit now, but and I guess that's because of the foul count. I, I seem to look at that. Three-point bomb there. Sung Hyun Cho up to 10 points. Beautiful stroke on that shot. That was very sweet. 41 to 65, the Aussies leading. Because the Aussies defeated Japan by 36 points yesterday. At the moment, they're leading Korea by 24. Eveson, he's got almost that many points. He's up to 22 now. Beautiful pass once again. Norris is just racking up the, excuse me, the numbers in the assist column. Five assists for him. Justin Norris averages almost a triple-double, and he's got a steal here from Cho. Pretty loose control there from Cho, just off the front of his chair. He averages almost a triple-double in the National League, which is uh, one of the better competitions and uh, in world wheelchair basketball. Norris averages 28 points, nine and a half rebounds, and eight steals, uh, eight assists, rather. Incredible numbers, isn't it? I mean, and Sean Norris, class act. He's uh, been named in the World All-Star Five. He's, he's had all the accolades. Uh, he plays with the Perth team. They've won the last four championships in a row. And on the back of stats like that, it's no wonder why. Wheels down the other end of the court for a couple of free throws, Sean Norris. He started the game quietly in terms of his shooting, but he's now up to 16 points. Hasn't shot the ball particularly well from the free throw line, though. Just two for seven. Now two for eight, 25%. And the Aussies, other than Justin Eveson, Eveson have actually been pretty ordinary. Eveson's unblemished from the line, but uh, if you take out his stats, the Aussies are a woeful 7 of 19. Norris has a rest, so does Doyle and Blair. Misens and Horry come back into the game, along with Ness, but I think they've got too many points. Eveson, this is the classification system at work. Ness came back into the game, but... Uh, they need another player here. We know you're good guys, but you can't win with just four players. So how many points have they got at the moment? They've got a two and another two and a one. That's five plus a four plus a four and a half. Thirteen and a half. Thumbs up from Brendan Dowler. <laughs> and Brendan, you can just explain uh, the Aussies, and in fact every team, have got a maximum number of points they're allowed as any one time as Cho. Hits another three-point bomb. He's three for four from deep. It's his back-to-back three-pointers from Cho. 44-67. to 67. The Koreans making a little bit of a run here at the Aussies. Coach Ben Etridge won't be overly happy with that. Someone's putting those sorts of numbers up at three-point land. He'll be expecting his guards to get out there and, and get stuck into that, not let that guy take that shot again. And just, on, and just on the classifications? Yes, uh, each team is allowed. Okay, nice shot from young Jeremy Doyle. Uh, one pointer there. Low classification, as we we're just starting to talk about. Um, so he takes up one of the 14 classifications. So he would be deemed to have uh, the the most impact from his disability, if you like, um, and works its way up to four and a half classification points. And so the coach needs to be aware that he's only allowed to have that 14 points on court. Whenever he makes substitutions, he needs to be part mathematician, part coach. So he's looking for combinations that work together with chemistry and also players that can put on the court together with their disability classifications. Meisen's working hard, offensive rebound for him. Latham composed under the hoop. He was pressured there from Kim Dong Hyun. But he had enough time and enough talent to put away the basket. Very close to three quarter time. 71 to 44, the Australians leading. And another two point basket to Korea. As time expires in the third quarter. And it's a 25-point lead to the Australians at three-quarter time. They need to win this game to secure their passage through to the World Championships next year. And they look to have it well in their keeping. At three-quarter time, it's Australia 71, Korea 46. So the Australians leading it by 25. We're about to start the final quarter here. The Asia Oceania Championships, Australia, Korea, Japan, China, Malaysia and Kuwait fighting it out for qualification for the World Championships. Ten, minute, ten minutes remaining in this, the fourth match for Australia in the group stages. This is Korea's third match. They've 
lost to Japan and defeated China already. Both of those uh, matches with margins in the teens. 15 points the win over China, 18 points the loss to Japan. The Aussies unblemished, three out of three. Looking to make it four out of four. And there is a violation. One of the Australians just rolled out of court. And Brendan, uh, the Koreans coming up with a stop there, but uh, at three quarter time we were chatting and uh, you feel like the Koreans are just a little bit soft at the defensive end at the moment. Yeah, I think they have just backed off that little bit to try and conserve a couple of their fouls down the stretch. Um, those fouls that we talked about in the first and second quarter are probably coming back to hurt them a little bit now. And uh, we're finding that uh, the last quarter there, Shawnee Norris and Justin Eveson were getting inside and under the basket quite easily. And we'll be looking to see if Brad Ness and Big Billy Latham can do the same here now. Kim dong Hyun passes it over to Cho. Now it's with Ko. Now it's another loose pass from the Koreans, perhaps getting a little bit tired. Olivia McGrath was with the Australians and their coach Ben Etridge earlier at three-quarter time. And Liv, he'd be pretty happy with the process. As Brendan mentioned, as Grant Misens throws one in with the left hand, if you don't mind. Yes, Coach Etridge, very happy. Started off the talk with one word, good. He also mentioning number four and number ten for Korea back on the court. That means five on five basketball. He said, this is our kind of basketball. Let's just wrap this up. Co just pops out. Brendan, what would Coach Etridge mean by uh, five on five basketball? Because to the average person, that's exactly what we've got out here that every sure time. Is, that <laughs> sure is. It looks pretty obvious, doesn't it? It really? does indeed. But uh, no, honest basketball and uh, guard your man. You've got responsibility out there. Five on five. There's no shortcuts. Get stuck in. Get the job done. Follow the process. Follow the process. The result will look after itself. I've heard him say a few times. Brad Ness with the basket. The assist by Eric Horry. Ness has 14 points. Eveson 22, Norris 16, Latham 12. Five seconds on the shot clock for Korea. Bake hasn't had too many attempts and he's lost that one. Again, a lack of awareness and a lack of talk from the Koreans. They didn't want to talk to Liv at half time, but I wouldn't have thought that would have flow, flowed through to their teammates out on the court, Brendan. No, nah, but you've got to credit the Aussie team there for the defence. They really extended out on uh, number four and number ten, as, as pointed out, they were the big threats. And Brad and Grant were right out up here near the halfway line, just about as the clock wound down, made it very, very difficult indeed for them to get a shot away. Latham, <laughs> pretty arrogant pass, it seemed like. He really just threw that up and said, righto, Brad, go and get it. Now Eric Horry needs to go and get it. Six seconds on the shot clock. Five. Oh, defensive collapse from the Co Koreans. And a foul as Horry swooped in for the offensive rebound. It's actually a foul on it. Uh, Eric Horry, but Grant Mysons was left well in the clear. He'd be really disappointed that he couldn't finish that off. He would be disappointed. He didn't seem to quite get himself set and get his balance. Now again with the, the players with a, more of a disability. He's a Class 2 disability player. Need to get that balance right and get themselves set for a shot. And again, look, Grant's got very high standards. He wouldn't be very happy though. Oh, Co, beautiful touch. On the free throw line. Now, Horry just helped up by Misens. 75 to 48. That's the first basket for the Koreans in the final term. The Aussies led by nine points at quarter time, 14 at half time, 25 at three quarter time. Now by 27 with seven minutes remaining. Horry to Misens. Has enough time to shoot again. Aussies field, percentage, field goal shooting percentage just dipping a fraction, but it's still a pretty respectable 53%. Koreans at 43%. Kim Ho Yong, who had four fouls very early in the match, it has hampered his output, but he's still got 11 points. As Korea, as Korea racks up 50, it's uh, far and away the best total that's been recorded so far against the Australians in this match. Japan, the previous best, and they only scored 30 points. Yeah, 25-point gap doesn't look very competitive on the scoreboard, but I don't know if that's a true reflection of the game. There's been some ebbs and flows in it. Korea have given it a good crack, and again, comes back to those early fouls that have probably, probably hindered them a little bit down the stretch as the Aussies get another rebound. Ness comes away with it. 
Outlet pass to Latham. Misens is going to the other side, trying to provide an option. Will Ness waltz up for the three-point basket? He's wide open. Grant Misens talking to him. He wants him to take the shot. Now he's got a couple sealed. Ness just taking the air out of the ball. Five seconds on the shot clock. How much time did he want? He's got 24. You want to use it. <laughs> now Latham. He shot a few three-point bombs so far in the tournament. And he makes this one count. The Aussies up to 78. They lead 78 to 50. You see on the replay here, this is a new element to, to Billy's game, a whole different dimension. It's going to really extend the defense of opposition teams. They're going to jump out there and, and take Bill, which is going to leave in under the basket more open for the, for the other big fellas to, to get some easy barks, perhaps if it extends the defense. You see watching on... Uh, with the Australians, one of the players who uh, likes to shoot from range in this menu quite a bit, Caitlin Ryan of the Dandenong Rangers, their captain. She's uh, one of the players in the WNBL. But, uh, just in the background there, as we see up to the free throw line, Cho Sung Hyun, who shot a couple of three-point bombs of his own so far in the match. In fact, he's got three out of his, so it's nine out of his 13 points from beyond the arc. The Koreans still with two matches to come against Kuwait and Malaysia as Ness. Oh, beautiful pass to Horry. Unfortunately, Horry uh, just waves to Brad Ness and apologises. He just took his eyes off the ball. Uh, there's Caitlin Ryan from the Dandenong Rangers. Been a member of a couple of championship sides here in the WNBL. But uh, as I was saying, Korea playing Malaysia and Kuwait finish off the tournament. You'd expect them on this performance, Brennan, to win both those games as the Aussies in transition. Doyle pulls it up and waits for some help. Looks over to Ness. Beautiful pass. Aussies lead by 30. And if Korea do win both of those games, unless the Japanese can be... Well, but there's still an outside chance for second spot. And uh, But certainly winning those two games will put them in it into third. And Again, that will put them in the playoff for a spot in the World Championship. So they've shown quite a bit here, and they'll draw a lot of confidence out of this match. Oh, they certainly will. They'll take great confidence from this. This is the most competitive that any team so far this week's been against uh, Australia, including Japan. And uh, good luck to Korea. And hopefully they will well, they qualify. Haven't, well, they haven't qualified... They haven't uh, qualified for a World Championship since 2002. So this will be a, uh, a big boost for wheelchair basketball in Korea if they can. Timeout's been called by Korea. They trail by 30 points. Let's see how happy Australian coach Ben Ettridge is. We'll listen in. All right? We can't let him keep rolling around shooting over mismatches. At this end of the floor, it's Bill's ball at the top. We're kicking it to hustle. Adam's going to come up hard and set the first pick. So you've got to look for it. Space, we hit you. First picks from you, Adam. Bill's pushing off below. Hustle, look, look. Last shot options that, okay? Hey, close it out here. Finish better than we started. Our first five, we couldn't be much worse than our first five minutes, all right? Let's finish off better than we started. Come on, boys. One, two, three. Let's go, boys. Yes, Coach Ben Ettridge there, not happy with the first five minutes of the game. If you recall back at that point, it was Australia 10, sorry, Korea 10, Australia 7. The Aussies off to a pretty sluggish start, but they have been good for the rest of the game. They lead by 30 points. Well, one of the things that we have been speaking about quite a bit right throughout this tournament is the uh, classification system. It's fundamental to the sport of wheelchair basketball. And Olivia McGrath is uh, still on the research, and she's actually got an interview with uh, one of the representatives from the IWBF who's involved in the classifications. Liv? Yes, Darren, I'm here with Tufik Alush from Lebanon. He's one of the classifiers here on the panel watching out. Now, Tufik, can you just explain what you guys are doing here at the tournament? Yes, we are supposed to watch uh, um, mainly new players assess them and give them the right classification and then review most of the players uh, on all teams to make sure that there's no changes uh, in any of the classification. 
And what sort of things are you looking for when you're classifying players? It's mainly we observe them when they are playing and so, uh, the movement, the range of movement they, they can reach mainly, it's that what we watch. The trunk movement is uh, the axe that we concentrate on. Now Australia's number 13, um, Eric Corey, he came in as a 2.5 classification. He's been classified as a two-pointer in this tournament. Can you explain what happened there? Uh, for us as international panel, for us uh, he is a new player. He was classified in Australia but uh, never was classified internationally. So what we saw that if we give him a class 2 he will have more um, uh, court time and we'll have more time to, to watch him and make sure what his class is. Are you able to give me any hints on what you think his class might end up at the end of the tournament? Sure, the hint is at the end of the tournament you'll see it on the list. Well, thank you very much for speaking to me, Tavik. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks to leave there with Tufik Alouche from Lebanon, one of the key classifiers from the uh, International Wheelchair Basketball Federation. This is an officially sanctioned IWBF tournament, of course. Line Street 3. Foul called as the Aussie defenders just closing out quickly on Chong Sung Hyun. As they need to do. And you can see he's got a beautiful stroke on his shot. Top scoring once again for the Koreans. He had 10 points and 7 rebounds against Japan. 23 and 9 against China. And in this game he's got 15 and 5. And there's three, three, three free throws. Try saying that a bunch of times quickly, Brendan. Because he was actually shooting a three-point attempt when he was fouled. Yes, no, very sweet on those first two. He's missed the last one there. But again, the Koreans are playing till the end, even though the scoreboard, they're down by 30 at the moment. But the Aussies got a, a fairly young team on again at the moment. Uh, Hustle and Adam Dean's here with Billy and young Lennox. That's the young 23 team again, is it? It is, but for Michael Hartnett, it is, it is all, they're all under 23 as Latham... On the tilt, can't finish it. He'll have another go. No, maybe not. And something that uh, I know Olivia McGrath has been observing is the role that Bill Latham plays out on the court when he's when he really is the well he is the most experienced player of this group. He's played over 60 games now for the Rollers, and uh, when they're out there, a oh, beautiful pass there from Cho into Kim Hong Yoon. And uh, he puts it away. But Latham really taking a leadership role amongst this group. He certainly does. I mean, young Bill, he's only young, but yeah, he certainly takes a leadership role um, in this, this young team. In that occasion there, you can see he was backpicked and that let the Koreans come down the floor and get a nice, easy basket. That's a strategy in wheelchair basketball as well. You're able to stop their opponent's chair as opposed to able body basketball where it's a lot harder to sort of block somebody in the, in the backcourt. Another nice basket there to Adam Deans. Though. Adam Deans' first point of the game. First points of the game, I should say. Hasn't seen as much court time in this match. When the Australians were challenged early, it probably would have thrown a few of the uh, plans of Coach Ben Etridge out the window, I suspect, to uh, rotate some of his younger players through. He knew he had to stick with the big guns for a little bit longer to make sure they got the result. Yeah, perhaps that was the case, but I mean, I'm sure he won't be disappointed with that. And, and the Aussies, they've risen to the challenge that Korea threw up. And uh, it's part of the process again. We'll keep hearing that word, process, to go through, keep grinding out, grind, grind, grind. And I reckon you'll make a brilliant coach, Brendan. You're uh, <laughs> certainly talking about the process quite a bit. Oh, nice little slap away. Kim Ho Young. Perhaps a little party trick he learned on the streets of Seoul as a youngster. Just tried to pick the pocket of uh, the Australian Russell there. Two minutes to go now, so... Uh, Elsie's looking to finish strong there. Mikey Harden inbounding the hustle. Bit of a weak shot there. Might have got a touch on that, the Koreans, but they're off in transition basketball. Oh, steal from Hustle. Russell, that's what they call. Oh. Darren, what do you make of that? Wow. You're the expert, you tell me. <laughs> he got slammed, didn't he? <laughs> he did get slammed. <laughs> they weren't happy about him taking that ball, the Koreans, and they're going to go down fighting. Here we go. Let's have a look. A big fella. Yeah. And he, he had his hand up before he'd even yeah. made contact just about. And uh, the big fella, Kim Dong-hyun. Parting gift. Yeah, takes a rest. Five personal fouls. He's out of the game with 12 points and eight rebounds. Hasn't been the worst, certainly, for the Koreans. And uh, he's just out of his chair. And gee whiz. More heavy collisions as these guys just aren't taking any prisoners. 
I've already mentioned once that the Koreans uh, have scored more points against Australia than any other team in the tournament. And will they extend that? They can't this time. And at the moment, they're closer than anybody else. 30-point margin. He's Billy taking that leadership role he talked about. They're getting the ball into his hands as much as possible. And uh, he's running the shade to a degree. And a beautifully weighted pass to Hartnett. He was able to keep control of the ball for long enough. And uh, it's going to be an Australian ball from the side. It was slapped away from him, but it was harmless for the Aussie. So 11 seconds on the shot clock. Hartnett inbounds the ball to Latham. Cho was out of court. So it's going to be an Australian ball again. Well, the less said about that, the better, eh? Yeah. Well, he did make one earlier. So we'll talk about that nice shot he got earlier. And he was looking for it again, but on this occasion, didn't leave the hand too well. Yes, the air ball from uh, Bill Latham. Joe motoring down the court. Oh, we did really well to get in a position. Just overcooked the layup. Now Russell down to Hartnett. He has the front court all to himself for a few seconds, does Michael Hartnett. He missed the layup, but Russell followed up his good work. He's got eight points now, Sean Russell. Well, six points, I should say. Mark Slocum on the stat sheet, too quick for me. The Aussies haven't spread the load with their scoring quite as much as they have in one or two of the other games. Due to this challenge from the Korean, Kim Ji Nam hasn't seen a lot of court time. He was short on that shot. Russell up to Hartnett. Pass around the body, under pressure. Coughs it up. The Aussies turn the ball over for just the 12th time, but five of those have come in this last quarter. Korea now have 18 turnovers. Latham up to Deans. He's got a couple of options. Russell is one over to Blair. Keeps it in. What chair control over to Russell. Just had enough pressure against him, but he coughed up the ball once more. Scrappy finish to the match. It certainly is. I don't Ten know seconds Jeffrey to go. Be too happy with this, but yeah, yeah, it's certainly scrappy. Seven seconds to go here. Looking for a bit of uh, what's going on at the moment. With some foul shots. Yes, a couple of foul shots here to Kim Ho Yong. Thirty-seven years old, Kim Ho Yong. He has fourteen points in this match. He got in foul trouble early, unfortunately, for the Koreans and probably didn't have the impact they would have liked him to have. The ball's tossed up the court. Can the Australians have one last shot attempt with two seconds to go? What will Blair do? He puts it up. Can't finish it off with a flurry, but it's a comprehensive all the way win. Well, it wasn't really all the way, I shouldn't say. Uh, they were really challenged in the opening quarter, the Australians. For the first time in the tournament, the Koreans took the game right up to them. But after quarter time, the Australians put the foot down and careered away from the Koreans. And they booked their spot in the World Championships next year with an 86 to 55 victory. Sean Norris was one of the better players for the Australians. Brendan, he had 16 points, seven rebounds and five assists. Slow start, but he really got into the game in the second quarter. Yeah, he sure did. He got stuck in, and that's what we expect from, from Sean Norris. Look at there, uh, we see some replays of him getting in under the basket, taking control there, driving the ball. Yeah, I mean, Sean's got the all-round game, inside, outside. He has had a few injury problems. We can see his shoulder is still taped up there. Had a bit of physio work. Yeah, assist again there into Justin Eveson, the Perth combination, so he's had a really good game. Pretty talented player. And uh, let's see how he performs on camera. He's with Olivia McGrath. Well, Sean Korea really took it to you today. What's your